a lot of people want to know what's going on with my eye. Why am I wearing this eye patch? So I have a condition called strabismus, which I got from a bicycle accident. Strabismus is when the eyes don't meet at the same point. So you see two different images. It's, uh, if you try to look through both of them together. So whereas a normal person, you're, you'll have one point and one level and you know, wherever you look, if you look over there, things come into the same, into focus. If you look over there, things come into focus with me and with somebody with strabismus, uh, they might be at different levels, they might be at different angles, and they might be at different points. And that happens, uh, you know, for me, it's all three of those problems. I made a PowerPoint once for my eye doctor after I'd been on a vacation in Venice and showed him what I was seeing out my eyes and, you know, laid the two uh, images over each other. And so you can see some of these images here. Strabismus is a condition that a lot of people have from birth. It's often called lazy eye, which I guess is seen as derogatory by a lot of people. And for little kids, it's actually fixable over a period of time. I have a friend whose little daughter sees the same eye doctor as did my first two surgeries, and I'm happy to say that the that, uh, little girl won't have to go through life wearing the eye patch. What happened with me is I had a bike accident. I was coming around the bend, and somebody stepped out into the road without looking from behind an obstruction. By the time I could see him, I was, you can see on the video, as it happened, the street was closed to motor vehicle traffic that day. There was no noise as a biker. I wasn't making any noise. And so the person just walked right out onto the road without looking. So he looked with his ears. You can see other people doing the same thing, just walking right out into the roadway. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Grabbed on my brakes, went over my handlebars, into the pavement, into a coma, into an ambulance, into the hospital. Uh, thank God I had my bicycle helmet on. While everything else recovered, the legs, the broken ribs, the traumatic brain injury, what ended up happening is that the nerves that connect the eyes to the brain, what are called the fourth nerve, got paralyzed on both eyes and locked into place in wrong positions. After the accident, the eyes were about 30, were about 30 degrees off from each other. Once we figured out what was going on, I had an excellent surgeon who did a surgery that so this was about a year and a half later. That brought the eyes somewhat closer together, and then he did another surgery and it brought them somewhat closer together. Then he found that he was at the end of the road for what he was able to do, because I, it turned out that I had another condition that came on at the same time that was uh, something called Brown Syndrome, and you know this, this thing is very rare in the literature. He brought my case to an international conference, and people tried to think about it, what, what could be done. They ended up sending me to another surgeon in Geneva who did another surgery, which brought things somewhat closer together. So now, instead of them being off, they're now more or less at the same angle, but not at the same location. And depending on what, whether I'm looking up or down, you know, the, the deviation can be quite substantial or, or not. So I'm sitting across from you and we're at the table. I can actually sit without my glasses on and we can talk. But if, right now, if I'm looking at the camera, that I, I have two cameras in two different places and that's just not working. So I have to go back to the, the patch. So we're hoping to do a fourth surgery and it's not at all clear that the fourth surgery will actually solve the problem, but as the doctor says, it can't make things worse. So, uh, you know, I either can use one eye now and one eye later, or I can use one eye now and two eyes later. So let's, let's hope for the surgery. I went in to prep for the surgery in March, and my eyes had deviated too much. Uh, so we put off the surgery until my eyes are stable. It seems like maybe they're stable now. Maybe we can do the surgery this summer, see what happens, but there are certainly no guarantees, and at this point, no, no schedule. For some reason, we, often when people ask about my eyes, there's a sort of, is, are you okay talking about your eyes? And, and of course, there's nothing shameful about the condition. I guess there's this one guy, this uh, Trump MAGA Republican who shot himself in the eye, and he has an eye patch, uh, an oath keeper who's now on his way to jail. But that's not what caused my accident. I tried to generate a picture with AI using Adobe Firefly and asked it for a person with true business. And it refused. It said this was a, a banned word. Uh, and then I tried the same thing with Dali, and it just gave these weird pictures of people doing weird things in front of their eyes. So obviously, somehow, somewhere, this is seen as a shameful condition. So basically, I can use the right eye, or I can use the left eye. But I can't use them both together uh, most of the time. And if the doctor holds the, one of these little cards where you see the little image jumping out of, from a, in a 3D way, yeah, that doesn't happen for me. What does this mean in my ability to navigate around the world? Not having three dimensions doesn't stop me from functioning, but it does stop certain functions. 
if I want to shake hands, I just have to put my hand out and wait for somebody else to kind of awkwardly work, make their way over to my hand. If you want to hand me a glass of wine, I do this. You know, I can't grasp the glass of wine. I can do this, and then you can put the glass in, and I can grasp it. Otherwise, it's going to go boink on the floor. I used to be an avid frisbee player, and now, you know, I couldn't catch a frisbee. I have no idea where 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 it is in space. I used to play catch with my daughter. Now we can't unless you know she, she can throw me things, and if they land, you know, if she throws them and they come right here, I'll get them. But uh, if it's going over, it's going off to the side. Yeah, I just I just can't grab something out of space like that. You might have seen the movie The Whole Nine Yards where the Bruce Willis character throws a beer and it just goes right over the shoulder of the Matt Perry character. That's sort of what it's like when things come at me. I just wouldn't be able to grab it. That and the combination with the Brown Syndrome, I can only see things in a certain box. So if something falls down below my line of sight, it's gone. If I'm walking along, there might be a leaf. There's a leaf. There's a leaf. There's no leaf. Uh, if I'm cooking, I stir something, I put the spoon down next to the pot, come back a couple of minutes later, need to stir it again, the spoon is gone. It's just, if it's down there and I don't swivel my head down, it's gone. I even lost the bell on my bike. Last week I was out on my bike for the first time since last fall and I was on a path and there was a kid coming up. I wanted to go ding ding to warn him away, but I was looking straight ahead. So anything that's down there was gone and I didn't see the bike, the bell. So I, uh, didn't use it, and I went along, like, I could have sworn I had a bell on this bike. Uh, did I take it off for fixing it or cleaning it or something? I was really confused. I knew I had a bell on my bike, but there was no bell on my bike. Uh, and then later on, towards the end of the ride, instead of looking down like that, well, I can't say I actually looked down like that, and, you know, there was the bell right where the bell was supposed to be. But, but with this condition, there was no bell. For the first many months, maybe a year, I was wearing the eye patch like this. But this gets really old, and it's also difficult if you have glasses. Uh, so you have to kind of do something like that. So then I went online and found that you could get these black patches to go on the glasses. So I just had the black patch. And then I could reali realize that I could get patches that I could sew on top of the black patches and make it a little more interesting. So this is my first patch, like that but this is really a little too freaky for people who are walking around. So I've done a lot of other patches. A friend sent me this great four-leaf clover, which I enjoy, but uh, I can't wear usually on a video because if I have, if I have the green screen behind me when I'm filming, this is what you'll... I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, you what you'll see. You can see why I don't use the green eye patch when I'm filming with a green screen. In terms of work, since a lot of what I do is on the computer, there is a certain distance that if I sit, if I'm just using the laptop, I can use this uh, patch like that. If I'm using the larger screen, two screens, then I can do certain things at certain angles. Usually I have to have one eye covered. If I'm watching TV, though, I can do it without the patch. As, but then if subtitles, some, if anything comes on that has text, suddenly I, I get double images and it gets very confusing. In terms of walking around, if I'm going to go outside, I'll usually use a walking stick or two walking sticks because I like to walk and the Nordic walking sticks are good health-wise. But if I'm just going into the city or something, I'll have one stick. And that also serves as kind of a warning. People see somebody with one red cane and they understand that the person might be visually impaired. This is my hazard combo so that people don't bump into me when I'm shopping or in other crowded spaces. I had a patch embroidered in French that says visually impaired so that people can see it when they're coming up from behind. Usually. You know, people see the eye patch and they'll make some sort of accommodation visually. They might also think maybe that it has something to do with my mental acuity, and so they might talk to me like I'm a little slow. The eye patch doubles as an invisibility cloak for women. Not so great. So, it's something I have to live with. Uh, hopefully, something that might be able to be fixed. But meanwhile, it's pretty much defined the last three and a half years. It's you know, been a big change. It does make me look like a pirate. It, slows down my work some, it slows me down from walking. I've certainly had to stop running because I don't have the balance. Um, I certainly can't drive. I am back on the bike, but uh, I'll show you the bike. It's a low, slow bike that I can't get in trouble with. And so if I have to navigate between things, I'm moving slow enough and I, that, that, that I can do it. Did a really nice bike tour in the Netherlands last summer with my daughter. Uh, that was all on back trails where there were no, there were no issues with cars. I couldn't drive even if I wanted to because I don't have any peripheral vision and so I wouldn't be able to see anything in the side view mirror or any cars coming past on that side. 
so I would I would be a total menace. When I do travel, you know, I absolutely have to have the sticks so that I can figure out where there's a curb. And climbing in the mountains is a challenge, but I kind of take it as a challenge. I like to go climbing in the mountains, but really not having the three dimensions is a you know if I'm going to pour something, I really have to kind of make put the put the one thing on top of the other and pour very gently, or I'm going or things will miss. Lots of things have ended up broken on the floor because I knock into them because I don't see them outside, below my line of sight, or because I try to pick them up and and I miss them. You know, but I certainly wouldn't choose this. I'm happy that my daughter still has a father. I'm happy that I didn't have worse injuries, but it's a condition that I have and have to live with. So you'll see me continue to make videos wearing this patch until maybe hopefully it goes away. But otherwise, you'll can I'll just keep on making the videos and using the patch. So if you've been wondering, that's the story and uh, enough said on that.